so it has been a while since I've had a proper rat cage set up with getting new rats and then doing introductions. It's been a while since I've had the entire cage to set up and I've missed it, I'm sure the rats have also missed it as well. And I thought I'd film the entire process step by step of how I set up a naturalistic rat cage and of course showing you a cage tour at the end because there is a bit of a thought process that goes into it, there is a lot of layering that goes on, but it's also considering the behaviours your rats have to express and be able to express in a setup. Things like running, climbing, chewing, sleeping, playing with the other rats, finding food, these are all such important behaviours that I think a lot of first time rat owners kind of gloss over when setting up a cage. You see a lot of beautifully colour coded setups that are 90% hammocks which look nice to us aesthetically but there's not really a whole lot in the cage for the rats to do so not saying that my cage is the best perfect example of a rat cage but all of these things are considered when setting it up. So the first thing that I focus on is the base of the cage and the bedding and I know I'm going to get a lot of questions if I don't mention this but I have done a separate video showing you how to order and also put together the perspex tray in the base. This just allows you to add in a lot more bedding for your rats and this is really important in any rat cage just so they can dig and forage in the bottom. So that is the first thing. I've already got snowflake shavings and also dust extracted hay in the base of the cage and I tend to just work upwards from there burying certain types of hides and things in the bottom and I do also have their 16 inch Tic Tac wheel which I've not taken out because it is such a pain to put back in so that is already in the background on the base of the cage but some people put these up in the top if they want to as well. So I'm just putting in a bunch of different houses and hides for them and also a litter tray at the back and then I also have a smaller perspex tray that goes on a shelf in the top of the cage. Sometimes this is just essentially a giant litter tray for them, but it does also act as a place that I can put different textures and types of bedding, just so they can have a different texture to explore and dig in and forage in. You can also add in things like a dig box instead that's got things like cocoa fibre in. I've done that in the past and it works really well, so adding in a different area to dig and forage. Today I'm just using Back to Nature on the bottom because they are going to pee in this and I want it to absorb it, so that's the layer on the bottom. And then also adding in um, cardboard bedding too. Then whilst I'm here anyway, I'm just adding in other items, so a dish that I'm going to fill with water later on, a platform, and then I start adding in some of the biggest items in the cage, and then I'll kind of work around those, so big branches that span across pretty much the entire length of the cage. I'll put these in, and I do tend to hang things off these too because it's handy to have another thing to hang things on when you've got such a big cage with nothing really in the middle to hang things on. Then once that's in I just go in with the other large items around the cage so big branches and bridges and ropes and kind of equally disperse these throughout the cage especially with the ropes I put these at the top and the middle and closer to the bottom just to act as a fall breaker just in case they do slip you want to make sure these are kind of equally distributed throughout the cage just to catch your rats if they do fall because although having a big active climbing cage is fun you also want to make sure it's safe as well so just spreading ropes and branches equally throughout the entire cage just to fill all the gaps. Once all of those are in I start hanging places for them to sleep and I do give them a couple of options just in case they don't want to be in a hot hammock or they don't want to share with their friends. It's good to give them a couple of options so I add things like hammocks and then also cooler plastic hides like the Sputnik at the top and then a few like hanging tunnels. They like to sleep in those as well so just giving them a couple of options and again spreading these equally 
in the top, in the middle, and also on the bottom level of the cage too. The next thing I add in is any smaller branches that you screw to the side of the cage. These I'm just putting in any gaps that are left at this point, but also focusing on areas they might want to step up into. So Sputniks and Hammocks for example, giving them somewhere to jump up and step up into these areas if they are a bit less mobile, which I have got an older boy at the moment, so making sure he can access all these places by having an extra step up if he needs it. Then that basically just leaves any smaller items I've got left. So chew toys, hanging toys, all of these smaller items, I just find a place for them to go. I don't hang too many on the doors of this cage compared to my last cage, just because the bars break quite easily. So trying to focus on hanging things at the back, I find that quite tricky because most bigger things I can't reach around by myself and hang them, so any smaller chew toys or foraging toys that I can attach, I'm gonna put those on the back just to fill a space, but things like whimsy chews or like wicker ball chews, willow chews, all of those I'm just hanging in any little gap that I can find. <laughs> Then one of the most important parts of the setup, I'm putting in some foraging toys. I have got a variety of different foraging toys. I don't put all of them in at once. I tend to switch and swap these out when I do a setup just to keep it entertaining for them. So just putting in three or four different types and again dispersing these at the top and the middle and the bottom just to give them options wherever they are in the cage if they want to find some food and trying to focus on different types so ones they have to lift the top or ones they have to spin to get the treats giving them different types of foraging toys just to keep their tiny little brains very active. Something else I've also tried to start doing more often is giving them different types of sprays and millet in the cage. These don't last too long, they do get trampled and thrown around quite quickly, but I like the way it looks. They don't tend to eat these as enthusiastically as hamsters and mice do, but I like to give them the option if they do want to forage and find some seeds in these, they can. So putting those in the base of the enclosure and also kind of lining the perspex tray at the top. I think this looks really nice. And if they don't appreciate this, then I do because I think it makes the enclosure kind of look a bit more naturalistic. So trying to remember to add those in a bit more often, but give it five minutes, they're gonna throw these around the cage and it's not gonna look as cute. But yeah, the last things to go in really after this is just their water, so their water bowl and also their water bottle. The water bowl I'm putting in their supplements, I find this way easier to clean than putting the supplements into their water bottles because it does get quite disgusting. So they get their supplements in their water bowl and then just plain water in their bottles and that works quite well. So. 
that is pretty much it for me setting up the cage. I just layer everything in and work from big pieces all the way down to the little tiny chew toys. And then of course, remember to put the water in at the end. But that is pretty much how I set up my rat cage. And this is the finished result. I'm quite happy with this. Given that I've not done a proper setup like this in a while, I'm happy with how it turned out. But yeah, I guess the final thing that I put in is just the rats themselves, and I've currently just got my four boys, Kinder, Crumpet, Toast, and Tiffin, and they were very excited to explore this new setup. It did take them a while to realise there was a top section because they have been sectioned off during introductions, and they didn't realise they had a hole upstairs to explore, so I did actually have to show them that that existed, um, but I also filmed proof they do use their wheel, I very rarely get clips of them actually running on it and of course it was dark when I filmed this so not the best clip but they do use their wheel, all four of them run on this and love it so they are really enjoying their new setup and destroying all of the enrichment that I put in for them but that has been how I set up my naturalistic rat enclosure for my rats I hope you've gained some inspiration if you're struggling to kind of figure out how to set up and how to layer a rat cage it can be quite overwhelming when you've got all of your stuff splayed out on the floor I tend to separate things into different categories so I know when to put in ropes and bridges and then work down to smaller pieces if that makes sense but yeah just have fun with it it's really fun to set up but it is exhausting <laughs> But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. The lighting in places has been a bit dark and gloomy, which is annoying. It's been so rainy and dark outside that not even my lighting can save me. So I picked the wrong day to do this, but the rats really needed their cage back. So I hope you don't mind that it's been a bit darker than usual. I like to make my videos quite light and bright and happy, but I am struggling with the winter days and not having good lighting, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video regardless. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!